Today I'm going to show you how to make a savory cheesecake for Swedish Midsummer vegan style. Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing really well. In a few days it's midsummer, I think it's in about five days and as a Swede of course I celebrate this and today I want to share a recipe with you that you could make to celebrate as well. It's a savory cheesecake, so it's made like a cheesecake in two layers and uh, here in Sweden we would call it a skagen cheesecake if I'm not mistaken. I ate it a few years ago at a friend's house, I really enjoyed it and uh, then I made it last year for my family and for our friends and they all really liked it so I'm pretty confident that you're gonna like it too and I can also confirm that Midsummer is not at all as scary as it seems in that film and uh, what does happen though usually is that it rains a little bit which it does today as well so I think we're having an authentic experience even though we're a few days early so I think we should just go ahead and start the cake and the first thing I'm going to do is to press some water out of this firm tofu if you can find extra firm tofu that would be even better but uh, I could get firm so we're gonna press it before pressing the tofu you'll want to remove all the water from the packaging and patting it as dry as you can and personally I don't own a tofu press so I usually use a shallow bowl where I place the tofu and then I put a little plate on top and a heavy weight on top of that plate to press out all the water from the tofu and I just let it sit like that while I prepare the other steps of the recipe and first things first I need to prepare a spring form for the cake and I like to line the bottom of it with some parchment paper that I press into the form using the top of it and then I set it aside while I start preparing the base layer. The thing that holds this first layer together is some vegan butter. So I'm going to melt 100 grams worth of vegan butter in a saucepan just until it melts very gently and then I'm going to mix it with some bread. And these two ingredients make up the first layer. It's very easy to make and very yummy. Traditionally when making this cake you use a bread called kavring. It's quite a sweet brown bread but I'm using a gluten-free brown bread and you could use any type of soft brown bread to make it. I like to use a food processor to crumble the bread so I just break a few slices into smaller pieces and add it to the food processor bowl. I pulse it until it has this nice crumbly consistency and then I do this in batches so I transfer the crumbles into a mixing bowl and then I repeat this with the other slices until I've done about 250 grams of bread or for me that was about nine slices. So once all the bread is in the mixing bowl I pour over the melted butter and I go ahead and mix it really well to coat and then I just transfer it into the prepared spring form and press it down to create an even layer. You guys probably know me by now and I love to use my hands when cooking so I just use my hands to press it down but of course you could use a glass or something else with a flat bottom to do it. So now that the first layer is in the spring form and I've tried to make it as even as possible so that we get as nice a result as possible, uh, we're going to want to put it in the fridge while we make the second layer. And what I didn't say about the cake and the second layer is that it should have a little bit of the taste of the sea or a taste of the sea, I think is better grammar. And what I use for this filling is some vegan caviar. And I know that not in all countries you can find this in the supermarket market so I usually give the tip that you can often find it at Ikea not an ad for Ikea but um, they usually have a lot of Swedish foods and this is one of the items that I use to at least be able to get in the UK and uh, it really gives it that taste of the sea but you could also put some nori seaweed in the mixture but I wouldn't say that it exactly substitutes this vegan caviar just an FYI but yeah let's put this in the fridge to harden a little bit or set a little bit while we make the filling. At this point 
point the tofu should be nicely pressed and a lot of water should be floating around in the bowl and you can just pour that off pat the tofu dry and then it's time to crumble it and for this filling I'm using 400 grams worth of tofu and I like to just crumble it with my hands into small bite-sized pieces then I set the tofu aside so I can chop up some red onion and you'll want to chop the red onion as finely as you can because it's nice to get really small pieces in the filling. Next I'm also going to chop up some fresh dill fronds. So I remove the fronds from the stem. You don't want too many stems in the filling. And then I just finely chop it and add that to the bowl as well. I use the fronds from a small bunch in this recipe and fresh dill really is a flavor of Swedish summer so don't leave it out or swap it for any other herb. Then I add in 100 grams of the vegan caviar I mentioned earlier and I use two colors for fun but it's not strictly necessary and I also season with one teaspoon of salt before I zest one small lemon into the bowl and I will squeeze the juice in there also. Finally, to bind everything together and make it really creamy and yummy, I'm adding in 450 grams worth of vegan cream cheese. I use the Oatly brand because it's quite soft and it's something that is very widely available here in Sweden. But I also really like the flavor of Vaya Life and I'm sure a lot of different brands would work just fine. You'll want to make sure that everything is well incorporated and then you can transfer the mixture onto the base layer that should now have set a little bit. But be careful as you spread out the filling on top just to not disrupt the base layer too much. For this part I like to use a spatula, surprise I'm not using my hands, and I make sure that I spread it out really evenly and smoothly on top. So again you'll want to spread this layer out as evenly and smoothly as you can so you get two nice even layers and then we'll want to set this now for about two to three hours in the fridge or even overnight just to allow the vegan cream cheese to set a bit again and for the cake to become more firm and then we can take it out and decorate it. the cake set we can decorate it like I said and for this you could use any type of edible decoration that you enjoy. I like to do this with some edible flowers because it's midsummer after all it's like the height of uh, summer flower season if you will and I've got some corn flowers here and maybe you didn't know this but corn flowers are edible and I've also got some pansies on my balcony that are really great edible flowers that you can grow at home and and if you keep picking the dead ones off, new ones will come and of course you need to water it. But it's a very uh, good plant to keep in your garden if you want edible flowers. And then I've also got some microgreens in a lovely purple color that I think will go really nicely. And I've got dill as well. So I think we should just uh, get to decorating. To get the cake out of the spring form I like to loosen the edges with a knife before I open it up and then to transfer it I just lift it using the paper and I don't really try my hand of getting this cake off from the paper. I simply serve it with the paper underneath and uh, pretend I like a rustic look <laughs> and actually I do like a rustic look so it's totally fine with me but um, I think you'll need some sort of special tool to get the cake off from the paper if that's something you're looking to do but I'm very happy to serve it like this and uh, the decorating is all about fun do it the way you like to and just enjoy the process
cheesecake done and I think it's actually pretty easy to make for the result you get. I think it looks really festive and summery and lovely and I hope you do too. Let's uh, give it a taste for you on camera although I've had it before. Like I said, it has a little bit of a flavor of the sea from that vegan caviar and um, you definitely need to adjust the salt to your taste, but it's also very fresh, but very creamy, of course, from all that cream cheese and it's absolutely delicious. I hope you will try it. As always, I will leave a link in the description box to the recipe written out if you want to see it in that format. And I'd like to thank you all very much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next video and a happy midsummer in advance. Take care, everyone. Bye.